Hi, welcome back to Lakeside Quilt Making Arts. Today, we're finishing up the video that if you watch on a daily basis that you would have seen today. And that is the one where I'm saying I'm conquering the foundation paper piecing. I haven't conquered it, I am conquering it. This is a process, I'm learning and soaking up all the learning, all at, all at once it seems like. It just has been flooded in. in. That video that I'm talking about, I showed this little piece at the very end and uh, we're gonna start this video fixing this little thing right here. I've gotta cut out a piece that goes here. This is my F template and it is F4 that I have to replace. My F4 is my fabric four and that's two and a quarter, no, two and a half by four and a quarter. So I'll cut that out and to get that replaced here pretty quickly, I need to just first take this off. It won't be a big deal. That'll go on smoothly. And then I want to show a little bit better something that I had tried to show in the in today's video that um, I think probably needs to be demonstrated a little bit better. And then I want to show what I've learned since I put that video up. I'm almost too anxious for five o'clock tomorrow morning to come around for you guys to get this video too. I uh, just wish I didn't need to sleep. <laughs> Now, I wish I could just do this full time. If I didn't need to eat or sleep or clean my house, you know, I could just do all the quilting and get it all done. But that's not the way the world works, is it? Okay, let me get this one doctored up. Two, what did I say? F4 is fabric four, which is two and a half by four and a quarter. Keep on wanting to reverse that. Two and a half by four and a quarter. I can get four and a quarter out of that using the black dots. What did we say? Two and a half. Yes. Two and a half on that black dot. Okay. And we're actually going over to four and three quarters with the entirety of that piece of fabric, but we don't need all of it, do we? Let's kind of cut a, a bit of a diagonal. Okay. That new blade just cuts like butter. Cuts like butter. Okay, so four and a quarter, right? Four and a quarter. Four and a quarter. Two and a half, right? With these stitches being so tiny, I think if I tried to use my well, maybe it would be fine to use my seam ripper. I don't know. I think I just need to go slow. Dig it out one at a time. I don't want to mess with my fabrics that are already on the template. I'll just go slow. It's not a lot of stitches anyway. They're just, well, I'll take that back. There are a lot of stitches. But Not impossible. It's easier to see them this way, I think. You see how it's perforating the paper really nicely there. It gives you some kind of idea of how well it's going to come off of the fabric. When you go to free the unit, the finished unit from the template. Okay, we are free now to put on our other piece. Okay, on our template turned with our template face up, we know that we are looking at the back of our finished unit, the one that is not yet created that we are working on. So if we turn this back, of course we already know that that's cut to a quarter of an inch because this was the one we made a mistake on. So we can just put the edge right there. And I'm going to actually slide it over so that maybe whenever I trim it off, I'll have more, a more usable piece left over. Because I know that because my folded piece of paper, my folded template comes all the way over and covers, completely is covered by this fabric that I've got plenty, right? So all I got to do now is fold that back and stitch right there. And I should be good. I don't may not even have to trim again. 
Oops, my template's trying to come apart. And by the magical power of editing, our background fabric has been flipped. Sometimes the easiest of things turn into be um, complicated. So I broke a thread and then I had to replace my bobbin thread. <laughs> so I finally, I don't know how long it's been. I feel like it's been two hours, but it's not been. I finally got this one piece put back on or not back on, but this one piece put on to replace the other one that uh, I cut off. Now, I don't think I'm going to take a knife to that or blade to that because it looks like it's pretty well a quarter inch seam right there. So something that I learned today by watching Karen Brown, she recommends uh, what she calls a shorter stitch, but hers is like a, a 1.8 to a 2.0, I believe, which is not terribly short. And then she recommends going beyond your stitch line and locking it in place on both ends. I knew I'd seen that somewhere, um, but I think that that's necessary if you don't have a super tiny stitch. If you're using a super tiny stitch like I am, then you don't have to do that, I don't think, because your tiny stitches are, are holding it pretty securely. There's not any gap. There's hardly any gap between those stitches. So next we just press it open and then we go about trimming it up so it can be nice and neat like the others. Before I cut, I'm gonna press it to make sure it's all laying exactly how it should be before I take a knife to it, before I take a blade to it. I keep on calling it a knife today. I don't know if you can tell how much darker it is in this side of the field of your vision, but it's dark outside. We've had so much cloud cover it was cloudy the day of the eclipse, and then during the eclipse, it was beautiful. And then it got cloudy again. It was really cloudy yesterday, and it is again today. I don't know how long it's supposed to last. I'm over it, though. I want my sunshine back. <gasps> yes, I about had a heart attack. Yes, okay. It's fine, that was supposed to go away. <sighs> now, if I was using a template that was completely trimmed up to the quarter inch seam away from the size of the finished piece, then I would have a little ridge that I could use a quarter inch ruler on, which I do have, uh, but I can't demonstrate it on this. I'll have to find something else to demonstrate it on. One of the foundation paper piecing tutorials that I watched this morning was by Sherry McConnell. I think it was one that was four years old. And um, she talked about using a add a quarter ruler and an add an eighth ruler. And those were helpful. One of the commenters in today's video mentioned somebody else who had a really good tutorial i have to go back and watch that one. I haven't watched that one yet. I'm going to show you soon a technique that that particular commenter gave me that is um, going to be very helpful, I think. So the advantage of keeping this on the paper is that you know where your placement is, what unit this is in the block. So this is F, so I know where F goes because I have because I have my cheat sheet and it shows me my cheat sheet tells me that F is in this um, half of this quadrant. So I'm um, A B C D E F G H. So A is on the right, C is on the left, E is on the left. I don't know why they did it that way, not A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Don't know. <laughs> don't know why that why they did it that way. <laughs> they didn't ask me. And this block, it probably doesn't help a tremendous amount because they're identical. Like, this quadrant is identical to this, 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 and this. But it's still good to follow along and learn how to do it the right way. Okay. Moving on to G. So G is blue dot. Do I not have any more blue dot? Oh my gosh, doesn't that look good? 
I may end up liking foundation paper piecing. Somehow I have either lost or never cut out one of the blue dot pieces. I've cleaned up my table. I have looked on the floor. I've also looked on my blue dot fabric and it looks like I cut out enough for four pieces. Don't know what happened to it, but it is not wanting to be found. So I will be replacing it. I'm going to cut out another piece. And with this one, we're going to use the glue trick. So hang on, we'll, I'll show you that. Okay, since I am new and hopefully new other newbies are watching and learning as I'm learning, I'm going to be overly redundant here, especially since we're starting a brand new unit. I think it's healthy to do that. And uh, especially since I am not well versed in this yet, I need to say it out loud. So we're going to say it out loud together. This first piece just gets applied to the back of the template because when you're looking at the front of your template, you're looking at the back of your eventual finished unit. So that's good. All right, and we know that this has to go down to there, right? And it's got to cover this area. So it does that in excess. I think I'm going to do this. I had one of my pieces shift on me. See, now I can line that up with the edge and we're, we're in good shape. And we know clearly that we're, we've got enough of this. I don't know why they told us to cut such a big piece. That's very wasteful. So anyway, I had one. I put a pin in my others and the pin got in the way of sewing these lines. And then it shifted on one end or the other. So I think the glue option is going to be the way to go. So that's what I'm going to try with this. My question is, if I can get the glue open, this is a brand new tube of it. Uh, I got the purple. I've heard that the purple is not good. Washable. Okay, so not all purple is washable, I think is what I heard, but this says it's washable. So what I'm worried about, and we'll find out together, is how well is this paper going to come off? whenever I try to get it off. Don't know, but I just want to have enough glue on there so that it stays in place. Let me close up my glue. And I'm going to stick this over as far as I think I can get it. So I have a maximum amount of that fabric back there left over. Now it should stay in place. Stay in place when I take it to the machine. Lovely. All right, now we need G2, which is our white. We have one of those left. Making sure I'm not picking up the cream dot. This is our white. And on this, I've got to feel what my right side is. So right side to right sides. This is the trick that I learned. I'm going to have something to there. I want to fold it back on that stitch line, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trim that because it's gonna get trimmed eventually anyway. And if I trim that, it's easier to see with the black line. And if I trim that, it's gonna help me to be able to see my new piece of fabric. It's gonna help me to see the placement of my new piece of fabric, right? All right, this has to go against this in such a way that when it opens up, this is completely covered by this fabric. So from here to here is our stitch line. And we need to make sure that when we get the fabric, this is our right side and it goes to our right side, we're gonna be stitching between here and here. So do we want to put that way over here? Do we want to put it here? What we know is that this is a quarter inch away, so that's fine. We can use it as our edge. That's a nice straight edge. We can use that. There's no design on the fabric for us to care about. Okay, so if I do that, if I put that edge to that edge, you can see our template falls off this edge of our fabric. So we want to move it on over, and we've got plenty of room to do that. 
We're not matching it up to that fabric. We're matching it up to where our stitching line is. So I can move all the way over if I want to, to like right there. And that's gonna leave me not much more fabric, but if, there, if this piece had been a bigger piece, then we would have been maximizing the leftover scrap. Okay, so we know that it's gonna fit this piece when it gets opened up. That's the trick that I learned yesterday. Folding this back, and then someone told me today in the comments, go ahead and trim this piece so you can see what you're doing. You see how much neater and easier that was than what I was doing in, in today's video that you saw? Okay, we're gonna go to the sewing machine with that. Oops, open it up. We're gonna go to the sewing machine with that. Okay, use my 1.2 stitch. It is sewn on, and now we can fold it back and make sure that everything I told you it would do, it does do. You see how our template is completely covered with the fabric, so we're in good shape. We don't have to trim next because we used the straight edge of this against the quarter inch seam that was already there. So that part's done. We can keep it in place, take it to the iron. Press that open, which we learned yesterday, you need to make sure that you do before you add the next piece on, right? Because if it's in the way, it gets sewn down. I think next time when I cut my templates, I'm gonna use a ruler in the rotary cutter to get it right on that stitch line, because it really helps. All this extra paper is just getting in the way. Okay, there's that. Now we wanna do this one. Let's pre-fold it. I'm pushing it down at the bottom, up against the ruler. Yep, I'm right on it. Okay. All right. We can cut that away at a quarter inch. That's going to help our visibility. If you watched yesterday's video, which I intentionally left in my struggle so that anybody else who's out there struggling can see that it's okay to struggle while you're learning. It's okay. Now these videos are supposed to help you. And so after today, anybody who watches that one will know to come and watch this one. And I'm going to be linking some tutorials in the description. Okay, so there's that. And what goes here? This is the Shoreline Navy Floral. I really like that fabric. All right, this is the back of our unit, so we want front sides to front side. Okay, and let's mark our stitch line. Stitch line is there to there. Take it all the way over as far as I can. I'm taking it all this edge as far as I feel comfortable over here. And the outside edge of that quarter inch seam to the outside edge of that fabric. So now we're going to be in good shape. And all of our template all the way out. Let me mark it so you can see it because I don't know what you can see on the display. That's the edge. That's the edge. And then this is the seam allowance here. So we're completely on the fabric. We're in good shape. You don't want to go to all this trouble and then your piece be too short. Okay. I'm not expecting it to slip and slide around. I'm going to pinch it good and take it to the sew machine and sew on that little line. All right. We are all stitched. Got a stray little thread. Okay. So whenever I press it, I'll have that kind of action going on and my template piece is completely inside the fabric so we're in good shape. So let me press it. All right, coming together, isn't it? This is our next to last unit. Let's see, okay, nice and flat. And we will be doing this last piece next and there was nothing to trim again. 
right? And if there was, if this piece had gone beyond that quarter inch seam, then we would just take it with this folded back out of the way, take this light down, put our ruler on it, and sew and cut. I mean, cut, cut. All right, we need our men's shirt background. All right, so this goes, I'm gonna use the edge of my ruler. And I'm actually positioning my ruler, not actually on the line, because it's nice and thick. I want it to fold on the line. So I had to put the ruler just be before it. And I'm using my nail to press that up against it so that we're on the line. All right. Very good. Let's trim that up. I love having a new blade. Okay. All righty. Right sides to right sides. All right. Our stitch line is here to here. I'm going to mark that so you can see it. And so I can see it too. So that's our stitch line. And that's our stitch line. So we want to go on this. I'm thinking about something here. Did I? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, so we want to make sure that we go up against a straight edge since we have one. Okay, and make sure that we have enough of that fabric between our stitch lines and we have excess, right? It comes all the way over. And this is our, let me show you, actually what I should have shown you was not just our stitch line, but our seam allowance line. That's the point there. And that's the point there. So I need to make sure that I have this shirt that spans between those dots. And I do. I can tell I do. And when this is folded back, it's completely covered by the fabric. So we're in good shape there as well. Fold that back. Keep a good firm grip on where everything is. Take it to the sewing machine. This is where it's easy to let things slip and slide around. Just be thoughtful about it. You could use glue if you wanted, I guess, and that seam allowance there, but this is working fine. All right, it's all sewn together. Fold that back. We could kind of clean up our edge a little bit. Okay, I'm going to press that down. It is kind of crooked. So it did slip some as I took it over there. Probably should have used pins. Okay. But it's, it's going to be fine. I mean, it doesn't, you won't know that it has slipped when it was all taken care of. All right. I should have trusted my gut when I told you guys that I knew I had cut out enough of the blue dots. Well, the reason that I was short one is because I'd put an extra one in where it didn't belong. This is my e-template. And it says cream dot. I don't know why I thought I should put my blue dot there, but I did. That should be a cream dot. So what am I going to do? Luckily, my four quadrants are identical of each other. So I don't have to redo this. I'll just reuse it over here. Oop, that doesn't go there. It would go. Yeah, no, I have to redo it. Because if I use it there, then I got these two together. So this whole unit has to be redone. That's kind of irritating. But I'm going to keep this little piece, and it might be used in the label on the back. Okay, so i got to redo this. i got to cut out. Oh, my goodness. i got to cut out this, this, and this again. And uh, another one of, no, I've got another one. I've got a cream dot. Kind of frustrating. Thought I was going to be getting done. I thought I was in the home stretch. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to go ahead and finish those other two templates so that I have a little bit of a success 
in front of me for this day before I backtrack to get that one unit redone. I think that would help me power through, go ahead and, and finish those other two units and get that whole block done. Then redoing this one unit will not feel ominous. It won't feel like a significant thing. That's my thoughts anyway. All right, we're gonna do our H piece because the one we just finished was our G piece. That's our G. All right, we're gonna do our H that'll go in beside it. And then after that, we will finish our, redo our E piece, I believe it was. All right, so that's our cream dot that goes there. That's our front side, our right side. It goes facing out. I'm gonna go ahead and put glue there so it doesn't move around. I gotta think about the fact that I should leave a quarter inch on either side of that. I almost scooted it all the way over to the edge. I'm glad I didn't. Because I'm going to be stitching right there and you want a quarter inch on the other side of that. It's not shown on here because you don't actually stitch this piece. You stitch that piece and stitch that piece. But you've got to have enough underneath there to capture. You can do just an eighth of an inch evidently because that's what Sherry McConnell did. All right, very good. That's a start. Now what's next? H2 is our chevron piece. It's not really chevron, but that's just what I call it. All right, let's get that folded back. I can't believe I gotta redo that piece. I'm trying to not think about it. I'm trying to not let it get me in a funk. I was paying attention too. It's not like I was watching videos or on a phone call or anything, I was paying attention. I just did an absent-minded move. And I made it on the F one, which is the one I, no, that's right. Which one did I do wrong? E, E is the one I did wrong, sorry. <sighs> that goes away. Okay, now we can see where uh, front sides to front sides, right sides to right sides. That's the tip of my point. This is the tip of my seam allowance. It's not being covered. I'm sorry, there's not great light coming through this window. Okay, so I want that. It keeps on dragging, okay. So I'm gonna place this. This is my stitch line up to here. Like that, I'm gonna do it just like that. My, can you, I'm gonna draw it for you. This is our seam allowance out here, right? Cause I got it cut. And then that's our piece, it's the points. Okay. And then this is our seam allowance. So all of our seam allowance has to be included on that fabric and it is. I'm going to do a little bit more glue. See how that works out. Nice. Nice. Okay. Okay, it's, we got that side done. Got it pressed. I'm going to do this other side. I need to fold back my line. Zoe, honey, you just came in. You did. You just came in. That point, that point, that point, and about a quarter inch out. Okay. All right. We've got complete coverage by our fabric of our template. We've got enough seam allowance on this side. We're all good. 
Just put a little bit of glue on that. Okay. Now it's gonna travel together nicely and we'll go and sew that right there. All right. I don't know if you guys caught it, but I put that on the wrong side. This is why I have to say it out loud all the time. Oh, okay, I gotta take that stitching out and then flip it over and do it again. Okay, got that one flipped back over and it's gonna be fine. Now I just gotta press it. I don't need to trim because I put it up against the edge. I'm just gonna press it open like that. All right, so our next piece is shoreline background. It's good because that's the one that's left. Okay, so front sides to front sides. So it's gonna go like that. Don't wanna make another mistake. Okay, and let me fold my template back. My, when I pressed the button to cut off my threads, it went one stitch beyond the stitch line. So the, so the paper is being pulled away from that stitch. Should not be a big deal in the, should not be a big deal in the piece though. We wanna go from here to here, that's fine. And then we got plenty of coverage down here. So we're good. I got plenty to hang on to. I don't think I need the glue. I'm going to just carry it over just like this. Got my fingers spread out so that's not okay. Now I just gotta press it and trim it. This one's coming together nicely. And now we get to fix the E unit. Fortunately, I had Another one of these already printed out and I didn't even have to go to my printer, which is upstairs. So I am using the ruler this time since I'm gonna trim it down to the seam allowance anyway. This is the only available space I have and that's where she needs to come. What you need, girlfriend? She's been outside. She's had her TRATs. She's got a food bowl that's full, a water bowl that's full. She's just doing this to try to get more TRATs, I think. She's got medicine. Surely my brain got disengaged because it is E that we have to do, not F. F is the one I messed up last night by cutting off some of the fabric. It is not the one I've messed up today, but I had F on the brain, so that's the one I cut out. But we just need E cut out. It's not like it was hard, but it's frustrating to keep on making little silly mistakes. I don't have to show that. I'm the one who edits. I show that stuff to you guys on purpose. I am a beginner. Other beginners are gonna be following and watching this channel and I want them to see real life. Getting confidence doesn't happen just because everything goes smoothly all the time. Confidence comes when you know how to work through problems. That means you gotta have the problems in the first place. E, we're gonna do E. All right, so the only fabric that I have pulled for this is the one cream dot. I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff since I gotta cut out more fabric, I'm gonna clean my space. So I have, all of these cutoffs that 
really, in my opinion, are not trash. Not some of these little bitty pieces are, of course. Um, and they will go in the reservoir where I put things for the dog bed that I'll eventually make. But the rest of this, if it's this, if it's, hang on, if it's this size or, or bigger, it goes in some kind of container. And the reason for that is I'm frugal. <laughs> That's one of the reasons. But also, I know that you can make some really creative, really scrappy things if you do that. And I have a leader ender project that I had started that I can use them for. And they'd be great to go with the colors that I already have going on. So they'll get saved. And what I'm doing is I have a Tupperware. It's not really Tupperware. It's from Hillshire Lunch Meats. It's what I use for giving my dog her medicine. Um, she has to have medicine morning and evening now. And so I put it in a nitrate, nitrate free, low sodium lunch meat. And not only do I have no problem giving her her medicine, the problem is that she begs for it all day long. She thinks, oh, can I get mom to give me the good treat now? I like that good treat, the one that comes out of the refrigerator. Anyway, so I have a lot of these. So my intention is to have one of these containers per little project for all the little cutoffs. I'm not putting that in there. To me, that's yardage. But that's big enough. You can get a one square out of it, maybe one and a half. Anyway, I should have kept a little Tupperware nearby so that whenever I was cutting, I could have just put them in there instead of having to separate it later. No big deal, though. It just takes a moment. And sometimes you need the meditative, slow things. Slow you down so that you don't get flustered and make silly mistakes like I've made. Okay, the rest of this goes in the dog bed basket. Okay, we're going to transfer from our, yeah, okay, so ignore all that on the back. This is the back side. I had double printed. That's why I had a spare one. Okay, this is the one we're working on. So E1 is our cream dot. E4 is our shoreline background. C is our chevron. I mean, E2 is our chevron. E3 is our shoreline blue floral. Shore blue floral. The only one that is cut out is the cream dot. Okay. And it will go like that. So I need to get my chevron out here. Let me get my chevron out and cut that and... Just start doing it. Get it over with. All right, we need one and three quarters by two and three quarters. And this has a little bit of a line on it, so I'm going to be kind of um, aware of that. All right, blue. Put this one on next. All the way over to here to be covered. So put that there. Put that there. Put 
little bit of glue. I'm putting it actually where it's not a seam because what I've discovered is that it comes apart pretty quickly, pretty easily. I just realized something. When I put that glue right there, what I did was I potentially left a mess for myself if I had tried to iron that. Yes, it came apart, but there's clearly residue there. So if I put my iron on that, I'm going to mess up my iron. And I don't want to ruin my day. I'm getting my iron yucky would do that. So I'm just going to finger press for right now. Let that dry good. Okay, next is this. So that was a bad move. Don't do that. All right, we are pressed and we are ready to trim. It really didn't take that terribly long. It just felt like I was going back to the very beginning because I kind of was, but I was only going back to the beginning with one of the units. Attitude matters. Okay, we have our A and our B. Everything looks good there. And we have our C and our D. Now we have our E. A good E and our F and our G and our H. All right, it's time to do some stitching. All right, these two go together and we sew on our stitch line. Get it all lined up. Everything is so precisely cut should not be a problem. Let's see. My needle goes through that point. Does it come out the point on the other side? Almost. The other one needs to come up a little bit. There. All of the seams have been pressed open and now we're ready to put it together. So I'm going to put this with that one, that with that one, and then go down the middle. Okay, I'm going to go press these so I can put them together. All right, they're pressed, seams are open, everything's looking pretty good. Okay, somebody asked me about pressing open and they always get buckling on the other side, like on the front side. And I don't experience that, that I've noticed anyway. And I may be because of how I iron from the back side. I iron this flat going up to that seam. 
taking my the flat part of my iron all the way up to that seam, pressing it tight. And do that on the other side too, kind of pinching that seam in the in between. And that gets a nice sharp edge on where that seam is. And the warmth of the iron, where's my little, I don't see my little tool, but we're gonna use this. The warmth of my iron then warms up the fabrics and they wanna lie a little bit flatter. This is a little funky because it's got the paper in there too and that paper doesn't really wanna lie flat. And when I first go over it, I'm not pressing. I'm just kind of separating it with the point, hovering and letting the warmth of the iron kind of getting the fibers to relax. Especially in this case where, where the paper needs to relax too. Okay, everything should be flat. Let's turn it over. Oh, it looks so good. Well, I'm done and I love it, but it's not as perfect as I thought it would be since it is foundation paper piecing. My points are actually off a little bit. Not quite sure what that's all about. I'm sure it's just a matter of um, when I was trying to get my points lined up up here and they tugged on it a little bit here. I don't know. It's one of those things that doesn't matter, but you do wonder how can I make it better next time, right? And something else, like I don't know, I wish I'd not put the blue dots here. I do, I mean, I think it's pretty and it works, but it was not my objective. So it is one of my coloring choices that I did that I am not necessarily happy with. Like it, it didn't accomplish what I wanted it to. Because like I said on Sunday, when I was making the Monday video, I I think I felt intimidated by this block from the beginning and it was affecting my ability to color this thing. It took me forever to just come up with the colors on it. And um, so I don't know, I'm sure we could consult a psychologist and there's something about, you know, with one frustration comes up but of how it affects how you process other things. Um, but that was certainly happening today. I knew that I, today I wanted to get done about an hour and a half earlier than I normally do because I need to get more sleep tonight. I only got three hours of sleep last night. Uh, I took a pseudofedrin yesterday morning and it was still working. Evidently it still is because I'm not tired, but it's going to hit me at some point and I need to make sure that I'm done editing whenever it hits me that I have been wired from pseudofedrin. So maybe that's even why I made more mistakes yesterday and why I made mistakes today. Uh, we, we, let's blame that. Let's blame the fact that my brain was jazzed up on um, Sudafed. Uh, it's just that time of year, folks. <laughs> We've got trees blooming. we got everything blooming. So I just needed a little bit of a decongestant. And um, it kept me from sleeping without being sleepy either. So not, not like I was laying there sleepy wanting to go to sleep. What do you think? Do you think it's going to look good in our quilt back here? Let's take a look. Something else I want to point out is I should have switched to using my blue thread. You can see my white thread in there, which I'm not happy about. It's hard to it's hard to say. It's too early to say how it's going to look in there. I think it's going to be beautiful. It has a very graphic, uh, stiff feel to it. Of course, it physically is stiff because it has paper in it, but that's not what I mean. It's got all these right angles, whereas every, not everything, but some of the others have some curves to them or, you know, some, they imply some movement, whereas this is very rigid right there. It's very rigid. It is my first foundation paper piecing block, and I'm pleased. I learned a lot, a lot with it. And I'm, I'm proud to show off my learning curves. I looked in the eyes of two young women on Monday who were brand new quilters. They had babies on their hips and they were in the quilt store getting supplies for their first quilt. And one of them looked kind of worried. And I was thinking, I remember that feeling. And I remember it shutting me down at one point back in the 90s. 
And that's partly why I am so vulnerable with this channel. The authenticity of that is what I'm seeking from others. And so that's what I want to be providing too. It's like, this is my journey. I'm no expert. Clearly, I've got lots to learn, but there's lots that we can learn together as I'm learning, right? That's my intent. But as I watch those women, I've thought about them several times this week, that there are people out there just like them. And I don't want them to be so intimidated because everything is always turning out perfect and no one ever makes mistakes. No, quilt making is full of mistakes. Some of them matter and we have to start all over or augment or do something. But that's life. We deal with it. We get some punches and we deal with it. But also some of them, some of the errors, some of the mistakes don't matter. But we can't, we need to push forward and get finished projects and not let things hang us up. If I had not stopped in the 90s, I could have had the past 30 years of quilt making under my belt. And I could have had all kind of knowledge and skills that I could be sharing. So I don't want others shutting down. So that's why I'm so vulnerable. That's why I put up a video last night. And it was so painful to rewatch how I was kind of stumbling along trying to find my way. That's why I'm anxious for you guys to see this video that you're seeing today, because it shows that I've come so far from just yesterday. And by the end of yesterday's video, I had already come, come pretty far. I was figuring out some things and I'm figuring out some more today. So my board is getting kind of full, isn't it? I need to take off my unicorn stuff and play around with my blocks at some point, but we're not quite there. Today, the 15th block was released. And so I'll get started on that on Sunday to release for you guys on Monday. But tomorrow, you can expect to see the next segment in the Peace and Quilt Sampler. I'm excited to do that. I've got my fabrics pressed and folded, and they're ready to get started. I got the first block we're doing is the shoe fly block. I think it's 12 of those. And so that's my objective. I don't know how far I'll get. It may just be to the point of getting myself set up for success. I like that phrase, when I'm moving the needle, another phrase I like, sometimes all of your effort goes into just setting yourself up, but you're moving the needle each day. That's what we do around here at Lakeside Quilt Making Arts. I hope you're moving the needle and enjoying moving the needle. As frustrating as some of these things were today, a good bit of them is because I was trying to rush through because I thought I saw the horizon. I thought I saw the end in sight and I thought I was could coast. And I could hurry and I made mistakes and it cost me more time. Not a big deal. Like I said, I still feel pretty energetic. My brain is still working. I just want to make sure I get done editing before my brain decides, hey, I didn't sleep last night. <laughs> Sometimes we just get in a hurry, right? Some of the mistakes are from that. Some of it's because we get cocky. Some of it's because we get uh, absent minded, we get distracted, or any number of things, but we just can't let it beat us up. Beat us up. But you got to keep on stitching and keep on finishing those projects because that's where we get our confidence too. Hope you're enjoying your stitching time. Move that needle. Get something done. Even if all you're doing is setting yourself up for success for tomorrow. Talk to you later. See you soon. See you tomorrow. Bye.